This is West Africa Weekly, a live series brought to you by Riglinks and RV Corps 9 where we talk about oil and gas news, projects, and developments that you can sink your teeth into. Here are your hosts, Greg and RV. Good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to West Africa Weekly. <clears throat> I'm your host, Greg Williams. Um, today is Thursday, um, May the 20th, and it's 9 a.m. here, local Houston time. So let's get into it. Let's get our rundown up. So we'll chat a little bit about the oil prices. Um, welcome to the show, everybody. Um, we'll speak about uh, the Sonar Drill contract uh, there in, uh, for 12 wells. Sonar Track uh, as well signs an MOU um, with uh, Equinor. Halliburton awards uh, some software grants to some Algerian uh, universities. BP, uh, E&I, to discuss combination of upstream assets in Angola. And Shell in talks with Nigeria to sell its onshore assets. Welcome to the show, everybody. All right. So let's see for our oil prices today. So it looks like um, for WTI, it is uh, $62.69. And the Brent is $65.85. So just a few quick things to mention. Um, prices fell a bit yesterday as the EIA reported a crude inventory rise of 1.3 million barrels for the week of May 14th. But strangely, um, enough analysts called for a build of 1.6 barrels. So as the build came, so did the fall in prices. So uh, weather along the uh, Gulf Coast um, here in the U.S. this past week has also been a factor as it's uh, been affecting the processing rates. Um, but we won't know the full effect until the next report. Welcome to the show, everybody. Yeah, South Africa, India, Russia, welcome. Um, also, let's not forget the uh, U.S. Iranian nuclear deal that uh, seems to be uh, ongoing at the moment. Although I think this has uh, less impact as the other points, but <clears throat> I guess we'll see for the next report. Um, so for our market news, this is... Uh, Sea Drill's JV Sona Drill been awarded a 12 well contract for the uh, Kajia. Uh, May 14th, Sea uh, Drill announced that its JV Sona Drill, which is a 50 50 joint venture between Sea Drill Holdings and Sonagal of Angola, was awarded a 12 well deal. Uh, there are some additional options for more work following the contract nine additional wells and 11 one well options. Uh, the contract is uh, contingent on the national concessionaire approval all of the work will be in angola um moving on here uh, sonatrack signs mou on emp with equinor may 17th sonatrack and equinor signed an mou to look at possible exploration and hydrocarbon opportunities in algeria and abroad uh, I think they're looking for a strategic partnership here, um, as most everyone else is. Um, there's two deals out there kind of in the market right now. One, you're either divesting, or two, you're looking for a partner. Not many big uh, deals where NOCs are taking it on their own and need some additional support. But we've seen a rash of IOCs divesting, so we'll uh, chat up about a few of those in just a minute or so. Uh, welcome uh, to the show. That's Nigeria, West Texas, and uh, Rio. Welcome. Uh, Halliburton um, awards major software grant to three Algerian universities. Uh, May 18th, Halliburton has awarded three multi-million 
uh, no amount other than multi-million. Um, educational software grants to Algerian public universities to train and prepare the next um, Algerian oil and gas engineers and geoscientists. The three-year license. Hey, welcome to the show, Thailand and Algeria. Um, the three-year license provides students and faculty with access to Landmark's uh, Decision Space Enterprise Software Platform. Landmark's platform includes seismic processing, geophysics, and geoscience, drilling, production, and data management. So uh, good luck to all the future students um, involved here with, uh, with this grant. We need new uh, um, oil and gas engineers. So... Uh, next on the list is um, BP and ENI uh, sign an agreement to discuss combination of upstream assets in Angola. So May the 19th, uh, looks like BP and ENI are considering uh, consolidating some onshore uh, assets in Angola. Uh, this mainly includes the oil and gas and LNG assets. They are looking to kind of uh, revive output following years of decline and chronic underinvestment. Both together produce about 200 barrels a day, uh, 200,000, sorry, barrels a day. They're saying that merging them would uh, bring significant opportunities to boost future development and increased investment in the basin. Okay, so... They're really looking to continue exploring in the basin, but don't want to do it alone. So they're partnering up, which is not unusual. Um, they're now just throwing the onshore assets in the mix. Welcome to the show from Calgary. Um, yeah, so they're throwing the onshore assets in the mix. Uh, kind of sweetens the deal and puts ownership on both sides. Probably a smart deal. Um, next on the list, we have Shell. They are in... Um, they're in talks with Nigeria to sell onshore assets. So another one from May 19th, um, it's been published that Shell is in talks with Nigeria about giving up their stake in the onshore assets in Nigeria. The company CEO made a statement at the last, um, annual general meeting. Um, he said, uh, we cannot solve the community problems in the Niger Delta. That's for the Nigerian government, perhaps, to, to solve. But uh, we can do our best. But at some point in time, we also have to conclude that um, this is an exposure that doesn't fit our risk appetite anymore. Uh, this is, of course, is in reference to some of the recent issues with court filings, uh, uh, court rulings for pipeline leaks and paying unspecified damages to farmers. So, yeah, every company has decisions to make. Uh, but here they're not simply moving on because they, they see it as energy transition. Although, um, some think it may be, but it's not energy transition. It's, uh, for divestments because they, they want to, it's a divestment because they, they have to, they can't continue to tell the stockholders each month or each quarter that they've lost X amount of dollars in Nigeria over and over. So it was a business decision based on the uh, lack of returns uh, substantial enough to, you know, keep them there, keep them making money. So, yeah, sometimes they got to do what they got to do. All right. That's um, that's our big ones for this week. Uh, let's jump over here and see if we have any uh, questions or comments. Yeah. So, um, um, Mustafa, there's a. I think there's a 50 50 thing happening here with shell. Um, they're divesting uh, 50% out of their onshore assets and moving um, a lot of stuff over to um, renewables. So yeah, there is in some places they are um, um, moving out of uh, onshore assets, kind of like here in Nigeria, except here they're doing it based on money and not an energy transition because they just, can't afford to keep working, um, not get enough returns, but yeah, there is a, there is a lot of ongoing with, uh, IOCs with divestment. So, um, by the way, thanks for the question. Um, let's see, um, any other questions? Um, no other questions. Oh, quiet crowd this morning. 
this afternoon. So I'm uh, Greg, and this is West Africa Weekly, where we talk about energy projects in uh, West Africa and other parts of Africa that may be of importance to you, your business, or your career. And that is a wrap for us this week. We will see you hopefully next week um, at the same time. So we appreciate you coming by and checking everything out. And we'll talk to you next week. You've been watching West Africa Weekly, a live series brought to you by Riglinks and Arby Kornar. Your hosts have been Greg and Arby. For sponsorship opportunities, send us an email at info at riglinks.com. Tune in next Thursday at 8 a.m. CST for another live episode.